This magic texture is super cool and it's super simple to create. You can combine different elements together to create a desired effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that right now. So we'll be creating these shaders here today. As you can see, the middle one looks kind of like Google Earth. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Hold up. Uh, FBI, open up! All jokes aside, guys, this is the shader that we're going to be working with today. It is super awesome, super easy to set up. We got an HDRI going here, a little background plane, um, and the nodes are super simple. So this is our basic node setup right here. I'm not going to zoom in just yet because I want to show you how to create this from scratch, but just completely ignore this part right here. This is the group input. So similar to the last crystal shader I made, this allows you to actually custom tune and fine tune the actual shader itself. So let's go ahead, create a new document, and I'm going to show you how to create this from scratch. So we're in our new document here. Let's go ahead and delete the cube, delete the light. Let's go ahead to Cycles GPU. I'm gonna go ahead and add an environment texture in here. It really doesn't matter what you add. I'm just gonna choose one that I always use, which is, I believe, this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description below. As you can see, we have our environment texture here. I'm gonna add in a plane. I'm just gonna scale it up as so. Let's go ahead and add a round cube in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give that a radius of one and arc, I'll just give that 30. So now we got a nice round cube there. I'm just gonna move it up on the Z axis, just like that. I'm gonna to snap to my camera view, extend our plane outwards like that. I'm gonna rotate our plane 45 degrees on the Z axis, tab into edit mode. Now let's make sure we're in solid view here. I'm gonna to go to my edge select tool, select this edge here, E, Z to extrude on the Z axis. Doesn't really matter how much you bring that up. And then you wanna select this corner one more time and you wanna go ahead and bevel this corner as follows. I'm gonna go ahead and give this 30 segments just like that. Tab out of edit mode, shade smooth. And now we have a nice background for our material for viewing purposes. I'm also gonna go ahead and reposition our camera. We're just gonna give that an 80 degree tilt. Lower it on the Z axis, go ahead to our rendered view. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and click on our plane here. I'm just gonna give this a nice black material. Doesn't really matter. This is just gonna make so we can easily see what's going on here. Uh, lower the roughness a bit, maybe up the metallic. That looks pretty good right there. Now with our round sphere selected, let's go ahead to the shading tab, okay? And let's go ahead and enable render, render mode and zoom in here on the camera. And let's create a new shader, okay? So we're starting from complete scratch here. Now the first thing you wanna do is set up our texture coordinates. So let's go ahead and set up a texture coordinate node, okay? We're gonna set up a mapping node, and we're gonna set up a magic texture node. And we need one more thing, and that is our color ramp. So these are all the nodes you'll need for our top section here, and now I'm gonna show you how to plug everything in. You wanna plug your generated into your vector, your vector into your vector, your color into your fac, and then your color into your base color. So now this is where you get to be really creative with your texture. What I like to do is I like to drag the black and the white right next to each other on the color ramp to get those nice, fine, crisp lines. And then for the depth, I'm gonna turn that down to one. And I'm just gonna turn up my distortion quite a bit, mess with my scale until I start to get something I really like. I think that looks pretty cool. Again, you guys can mess with the distortion as much as you want. Once you have it somewhere you like it, keep it there and remember these settings for the next part. Just a little pro tip here. The smoother your geometry is, the smoother this texture is gonna come out. So I'm actually gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and I'm gonna bump that up to three levels for the viewport and four for the render. So now you're gonna get those nice, smooth, crisp lines when you go to render. So in order to match our shader exactly, I'm also gonna plug our color right into the metallic, just like that. With these first five nodes highlighted, I'm gonna shift D to duplicate. I'm gonna bring them down here. And now we're gonna mess with the second part of our shader. Go ahead and move these four nodes down so we have room to work with. G to move those, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug everything from our color ramp here, and we just wanna plug our color into the metallic part here. And then for our magic texture, we wanna plug that into our color ramp, which it's already plugged into, and into our roughness there. You're probably wondering why nothing's changing yet, and that's because we haven't used our mix shader yet. So just hold tight and we will use that. Go ahead and duplicate these left two nodes here, bring them up as such, and then we wanna add in a gradient texture, okay? And we wanna duplicate our color ramp. And now we just wanna plug everything in as follows. And then for our color, we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the base color of our second principled BSDF. I'm just gonna drag everything down so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. 
So far you should have something like this. Now let's go ahead and add a mix shader in. So I'm gonna add in a mix shader. Make sure it's not mix RGB, it needs to be mix shader. And we wanna go ahead and plug in the top shader into the first mix part, and then our second shader into the bottom. You won't notice much of a change, but when we go in here to our color ramp, if we change around these colors right here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a blue color, and I'm gonna make a nice purple color. As you can see, we're starting to get a nice gradient underneath of our magic texture. So this is where the magic actually comes into play and you can actually mix these two together to get the desired result. So the key thing to make this work here is that these magic textures both have to have the exact same settings. Otherwise, everything's gonna be thrown off. So how do we actually do that without having to go back and forth and change them both? The way we wanna do this is we actually wanna group all the nodes together. So I'm gonna highlight all of our nodes except for the material output Control G to group them. And if I press tab, you'll see they're all grouped into this node group. Tab is how you get in and out of that node group. So keep that in mind for your shortcut. Now, this is a really good thing to understand and learn here, guys. So really pay attention. This group input node is extremely useful. This is how I created the crystal shader last time. And I was able to give you guys different things that you could adjust. So basically anything that you plug into here, you can adjust on the right, right side panel where that little material icon is. So I'm gonna actually select on that material icon and you'll see we don't really see much here. We just see our node group. But if I go to our group input and I plug it into, let's say the rotation, now you have on the right hand side all of those rotational values that you can change. Now, of course, I don't wanna do this. I only want us to be able to adjust the magic texture as of right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug in this first dot right into our scale of our magic texture on the top. Now we're gonna plug that same dot into the scale on the bottom. And now look at on the right hand side, we have our scale here. As you can see, I can easily adjust our scale in real time, which is gonna allow you to have both values be adjusted at the same time. This is how you're able to get away with not having things overlap improperly. So this is gonna really help you in the future. I also wanna go ahead and plug our distortion value in as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the next dot. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the distortion and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into this distortion of the bottom as well. So now we have our distortion on the right and we can adjust that as follows as well. See this little arrow on the left? You wanna click that, go to your group, and right here you can rename things. So let's say I just wanted to call this Kenny's Scale. So now we can rename these to custom names as well, which is what I did with the crystal shader. I'm gonna go ahead and rename distortion, custom distortion. Just like that we are able to define these custom attributes of our shader that we just created. So this is really cool guys, we're really getting somewhere with this. But now I'm gonna step it up one more level and show you how you can make an even cooler shader with this same idea. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of these nodes right here except for the material output and the group input. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those. And then I'm going to, now I'm gonna shift D to duplicate this. I'm just gonna bring it right over here and I'm gonna get rid of the current material. We're gonna create a new material, okay? We're gonna delete our principal BSDF and then we're gonna paste in our nodes from before. Now we're just gonna move them off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and plug our shader into the surface, okay? And then as before, you can group these and make your custom attributes with the group input, but I just wanna show you a cool little trick. We have two principal BSDFs, which is great. But let's say you wanted to have glass instead of your second BSDF. We well, can actually do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this top part right here, okay? I'm gonna delete our principal BSDF and I'm gonna add in a glass BSDF, okay? And we're just gonna plug in the color from our color ramp into the color of the glass and then our BSDF into the bottom shader. Now, by adjusting our sliders on our color ramp, we're able to make this more or less transparent. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust them as follows. And if you zoom in here, you can see some transparency. I've also adjusted the IOR to 1.12, which I think looks really nice. And the roughness, you can turn that up as well. And you'll just get this really nice effect. And what I wanted to show you guys here is how you can literally plug in anything you want into a mix shader and create something really, really cool. Again, you just have to maintain the same values between your magic textures on both sides. That way things overlap properly. But as far as I'm concerned, this looks really, really nice. And you can duplicate it again, and you can add an emission shader with a principal BSDF. You can add literally anything you want. It's completely customizable. 
that's pretty much it guys um, this middle one here is just another mix shader I'll go ahead and show you the nodes for that one again tab to pop into that looks like it's just another glass BSDF um, same thing guys we're just using two shaders or mixing them together getting the desired result so guys feel free to be really creative and just experiment with what you guys think is gonna look good I thought this gold one was really cool and what's great like I said on the side you can easily adjust the scale very very easily and adjust it to your liking you can adjust the distortion and what's really cool another pro tip for you guys <laughs> if you want to adjust the distortion you can actually animate it so let's say I wanted to go ahead and insert a keyframe right here I could on frame 1 jump to frame 30 adjust the distortion value to a higher value and then you can keyframe that and you're gonna have this nice animation that's gonna kinda look just like this it's just gonna go back and forth so really cool stuff guys you can easily keyframe all of these attributes super useful information super simple to create as you can tell so I really hope you guys enjoyed this one I just want to thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe to the channel I'm gonna be putting out more great content soon if you like this please share it with a friend drop a comment down below let me know what you would like to see next I'd be more than happy to take some requests from you guys all right, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.